Web3 is the future of the internet. But what exactly is Web 3.0 and why is it important to you if you're into cryptocurrency? Let's find out by exploring the evolution of the web. Let's go. Web 1.0 was the beginning of the internet and that era lasted probably between 1989 to 2004. During those days, I myself would have a 56k modem, a dial-up modem, and I would use a free internet service provider such as AOL or AltaVista to go online on my Netscape browser in exchange for companies displaying banner ads that would display on my computer screen. And back then you had a trade-off between making a phone call or going on the internet. Now the earliest web looking back really didn't seem like that much fun, but of course when Web 1.0 came out and I was just a teenager, it was a lot of fun going on these chat rooms and talking to random strangers online. Wait a second, isn't that what I'm doing now? But Web 1.0 was basically an internet depository of information, similar to a user-generated encyclopedia that was online. A lot of content was user-generated because people made websites and those websites produced information online. But you didn't really have the ability to interact with that information like comment, like, or even post. For the most part, it was really static. And if you weren't around in that era in school for like school projects, you couldn't even source information you found on the internet as it might not be factually correct. But the one really cool thing about Web 1.0 for anyone who wasn't around during that time was that it really felt like a community. There really wasn't these really large centralized companies like Google, Facebook or TikTok that seemed to control all the information and the traffic. It really was an era where it felt like you kind of moved to a brand new country that was not yet developed and you had the opportunity to help build that infrastructure by building your own websites using HTML and CSS. And there were really cool entrepreneurs in the web 1.0 era who made millions just like viral YouTubers and TikTokers today. Like one really cool project in the web 1.0 era was like the million dollar homepage where someone actually made $1 million by selling each pixel on their website for a dollar. And you can take a look at that web page today to see the companies that were advertising back then versus which companies are still around today. But unfortunately, the limitation with Web 1.0 was that it really wasn't accessible to everyone and not everyone had the technical skills to build these websites. Like you really had to be a programmer to make websites and there was also little connection between the user of the content and the producer. It was just like, here's the information, go consume it. So while Web 1.0 was fun, it also had some major limitations. So along comes Web 2.0, and I think this era lasted between 2004 and 2020. This was the era of social networking and the social web, where you had the emergence of companies like Facebook, Google, YouTube. You had the emergence of blogging and RSS. And the biggest shift in this era versus Web 1.0 was, I would say two things. Number one, the accessibility for non-technical users to produce content on the internet. And number two, information was no longer static. You could upvote, downvote, comment, and interact with the producer of the content. And we really take this for granted today, but in the beginning of Web 2.0, I remember as a college student, when I first got introduced to Facebook, how amazing it was that non-technical users such as myself could go on Facebook and look at pictures of all these beautiful, oh, sorry, sorry. Now in this era, technologies were really created to really simplify the user experience. So think Shopify, anyone can create an e-commerce store without technical skills. Facebook, anyone can post social content online and share it with their family and friends. YouTube, anyone can produce video content online and share it. Amazon, anyone can purchase goods online and share reviews. So in addition with social networking, the two major shifts that happened in this era was number one, storing information on the cloud instead of on local hard drives. And this really led to the rise of services like Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure, and obviously the emergence of mobile phones and Apple. Like Apple came up with the iPhone and created apps, which further simplified the user experience of going on the internet without the need for a desktop computer like in Web 1.0. And the number two thing was the rise of mobile phones and mobile connectivity globally added billions of users onto the internet. And whereas Web 1.0 was still limited to more developed countries, Web 2.0 ushered in an era of global connectivity. Now Web 2.0 isn't perfect. And one weakness of this era was really the dominance of big tech companies like Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, 
or Fang. And in, in exchange for these companies giving us a more simple user experience to produce and interact with content, we gave them control over our information and privacy, and in some ways, our freedom. You have all these problems in the modern Web 2.0 world, like information breaches and data hacks. Like some of the companies that had massive data leaks this year were like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, T-Mobile, Coinbase, CVS. We're almost over a billion user records were compromised. All right, just a really quick side note, and that's I take personal information security really seriously. And I personally use the company Aura for digital security to monitor my data and to protect my personal information. Thank you Aura for partnering with me in this video. And if you're brand new to Aura, they are partnered with the NBA as well. And you can really see their logo on the jersey of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Let's go Anthony Edwards. So a lot of people don't really know how to protect themselves online, which really puts you at the risk of things like credit fraud and especially identity theft. Please educate yourself about online digital security in the coming years. If you wanna check out Aura, I do have a referral link below and that is the solution that I use. They have a special 14 day free trial. All right, so big tech, fang and social networking really dominated the web 2.0 era. But really big tech wasn't the vision of the original internet. Web 1.0 was not about having big dominant internet giants control all our information and control the internet and be the only ones that profit off of it. So now comes Web3 or Web3.0, which was really an idea that became mainstream, I would say around 2020 till about now. And essentially this vision is a blockchain based web that includes cryptocurrencies, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, decentralized finance, and much more. And this vision is basically being called the future of the internet. However, I would say that the Web3 revolution already started with the development of Bitcoin, which was founded in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto and began use in January of 2009, which is obviously a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Web3 is a trustless, permissionless version of the internet where things are powered by communities. And unlike Web2, where big tech is being incentivized through all the profits, in Web3, it is the actual users that themselves are being incentivized. Now, a lot of people that grew up on the internet in the mid 2000s with the web 2.0 era and never experienced the web one era would feel that the entire concept of web 3.0 seems very unnatural. But as someone that grew up in the web 1.0 era, I personally feel that web three feels a lot more like web one. And I'm personally really excited about it. And there are gonna be massive shifts that are happening in the next five to 10 years. So I am gonna use gaming as an example. Gaming is a massive industry, and obviously in 2021, we had the rise of one of the first mainstream play to earn games, Axie Infinity. In Axie Infinity, you basically own Axies, which are these digital pets that you can use to battle other digital pets for in-game currency, which is SLP or Smooth Love Potions. Now this concept sounded really similar to me because well, 20 years ago, I was addicted to a game called Neopets and you had very similar concepts. You own Neopets, which were these digital pets that you could use to battle other digital pets for in-game currency, which were Neo points. But what is the difference between then and now? I would say true in-game ownership through NFTs, which can be exchanged for other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, which can then be traded for fiat in the physical world. For example, Axies are NFTs and you have true ownership through a digital wallet. And if you want to ever leave the game and sell your Axie or Smooth Love potions in the future to someone else, you have the ability to do so. You can off ramp to ETH, which you can then off ramp to fiat. Whereas with Neopets, let's say you spent a lot of time in the game upgrading your pet and eventually you wanted to sell your Neopets or your Neo points for cold hard cash. Well, you couldn't, there was no off ramp. Like a lot of people didn't know this, but people try to sell their Neopet and Neopoints on eBay and the company would find out and would basically ban those people and those accounts. So you couldn't really take all the value and time you spent into a game and exchange that value elsewhere. In my case, I spent almost like five years working really hard on upgrading my Neopet getting it to one of the top 100 Neopets, making significant contributions to the land of Neopia through blog posts and becoming a millionaire in terms of Neo points. And eventually my account was frozen. I had no idea why, and I could never get my account back. I was crying. <laughs> now let's use another example. Another example would be say, you own an Instagram account, but do you really own that account? Like 
What if your Instagram account got frozen or blocked at any time by Facebook and you lose access to your account and your entire subscriber base? Just like in Neopets, you never really had true ownership. Whereas with Web 3.0, ownership and control is decentralized. And instead of large centralized companies accruing all the incentives of your contributions and owning all the rights and rewards to your data, users and builders have true ownership over your content, your ideas, your thoughts, your contributions to a community and pieces of internet services through NFTs and cryptocurrencies. I think Web3, the easiest way to think of it is you make contributions and you share in the incentives and cryptocurrencies and NFTs are really rewards for your contribution to a community which are governed by DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. So you start to own a piece of the web. Now is Web3 all sunshines and rainbows? After being around since the Web1 era, I would say that one of the biggest things holding Web3 from flourishing in its current state is really complexity. While some of the drawbacks of Web 2.0 era is losing control, you can't argue that big tech companies made things simple. YouTube made posting videos online as simple as clicking a button. Shopify made creating an e-commerce store as simple as clicking a button. Amazon made it simple for anyone to buy products online. We are not there yet in Web3. Web3 is still very complex for mainstream people, just like Web 1.0 was for non-technical people who didn't know HTML or CSS. So I feel the companies and DAOs that will really flourish in the Web3 era are the ones that are really able to simplify things for a mainstream audience. So those are really the projects that I like to focus on. And one of the best ways to evaluate projects is simply do you want to be a part of that community and add value to that community? Do you want to own a piece of that community? All right, with that said, I don't want to make this video too long. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. Please check out Aura as well in the link below if you want a free 14-day trial and you're brand new to online digital security. And with that said, please like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.